part, the apostles gave their testimony to the... A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter began to speak to Cornelius and the other Gentiles. I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. That message spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John announced, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with the power, how he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did both in Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree, but God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear, not to all the people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him that everyone who believes in him receives forgive, forgiveness of sins through his name. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. I invite you now to join me in reading Psalm 118, found on page 760 in your Book of Common Prayer. Reading together in unison. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His mercy is endure forever. Let Israel now proclaim, his mercy endures forever. The Lord is my strength and my song, and he has become my salvation. 
There is a sound of exultation and victory in the tents of the righteous. The right hand of the Lord has triumphed. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the Lord has triumphed. I shall not die but live and declare the works of the Lord. The Lord has punished me sorely, but he did not hand me over to death. Open for me the gates of righteousness. I will enter them. I will offer thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. He who is righteous may enter. I will give thanks to you, for you answered me and have become my salvation. The same stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing, and it is marvelous in our eyes. On this day, the Lord has acted. We will rejoice and be glad in it. A reading from the letter to the Corinthians. I would remind you, brothers and sisters, of the good news that I proclaim to you, which you in turn received, in which you also stand, through which also you are being saved. If you, told, if you hold firmly to the message that I proclaim to you, unless you have come to believe in vain, for I handed on to you as of first importance what I in turn had received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas, then to the twelve. Then he appeared to more than 500 brothers and sisters at one time, most of whom are still alive, though some have died. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles. Last of all, as to one untimely born, he also appeared to me, for I am the least of the apostles, unfit to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am, and his grace toward me has not been in vain. On the contrary, I work harder than any of them. Though it was not I, but the grace of God that is with me. Whether then it was I, or they say, so we proclaim. And so you have come to believe. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Glory to you, Lord Christ.
Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter, the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciples set out and went toward the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came following him and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple who reached the tomb first also went in, and he saw and believed. For as yet they did not understand the scripture that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white, sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you had carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, do not hold on to me, because I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. She told them that he had said these things to her. This is the gospel, the good news of the Lord. Thank you much, Skip, for helping me to burn and for not burning up yourself. resurrection and Mary went to the tomb the tomb was empty for the one who is the light of the world coming into the world as recorded in John chapter 1 was alive, having been murdered. And the pain of that and buried rose from the dead 
and is alive, alive, alive to be our light, to lead us, to lead us, to lead us. And so, hallelujah, Christ is risen. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. We need each other. Amen. May be seated. I invite us to redo what we just did. And what we just did is the standard of the church. But last night, I believe the risen Christ added to that standard. And the phrase which I'm incorporating and ask you to share is one love. Here's the back story to one love. Last night, the first service of Easter, the Easter vigil, with the lighting of the Paschal candle, as we stood out front, ready to light the candle, in walked someone. I looked, I did not recognize the person, but what was clearly, which struck me, was that he was wearing a pendant with the term or the phrase, one love. There I was, one love lighting the Paschal the light of Christ. So incorporate that into the standard, hallelujah, Christ is risen. At the end of which, just add one love. Ready to do it? Three times. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. Risen Lord Jesus, present with us now, open our hearts to receive you, open our minds to understand you, ignite our wills to follow you, bring your resurrection life to all that is dead in us, your living hope to all that despairs, your risen joy to all that is sorrowful. Bring your love to transform our living. May our lives touch all those we meet, that all your children may come to know you, to be their life, joy, hope, and love. With that prayer, I invite our thoughts in these next few moments We need each other. We need each other. I needed that person last night. And in which and out of which has come the explosive and expansive of the resurrection, of what Easter is all about. I didn't know it, but it happened. I needed that person. He walked in, I did not recognize him. I looked at his face, I'm not quite sure how to put
politically correct to say this, so I'm just going to say it with no judgment because this is how it impacted me. His face had two, maybe three colors. He had on a head covering and it seemed to me he, at eight o'clock in the evening, was wearing shades. He was not traditionally so formally dressed for worship. He was in black. And so his pendant stood out with the words, one love. It had the African colors or that of the Rastafarian movement of red, yellow, and green. Just maybe something in my head connected, not just, but more importantly, one love. Not just that that's a popular song, which I enjoy. And not just the colors of red, yellow, and green, but the whole joy of this person, of this gentleman, whom I did not recognize being gifted, that, that that person was led to be among us. I must be honest with you, and yes, I know that this service is being recorded and posted on, at least on YouTube. I watched him very carefully through the service part of which was the sense of fear of what is called, and I put it politically correct, church violence. That could it be that that, that person could have come among us as is the history time and time again surrounding gun violence of persons coming into a church and shooting them up. That through flowed through my mind. And so that, that truthfully is one motivation of being mindful and responsible, of paying intentional, careful attention to that gentleman. But that was set free, or I was set free when I saw him rhythmically moving to the beat. I couldn't tell if he was saying when we got to the Lord's Prayer or whether he was singing. But all through the experience, I could tell he was having a good time. I needed him, and I believe he needed me. We needed him, and I believe both, him and us needing each other. Proof of the fact that we need each other is here as I'm sharing the experience with you and inviting you into the experience with him, with me, with us, and yes, with yourself. We need each other. That title, those words, we need each other. I'm taking from Jean Vanier, a writer of our church, a priest of the Roman Catholic Church, that that is the title of his book, We Need Each Other. We need each other as we see in the story, as we have just recounted from John chapter 20. See Mary going 
to the tomb. She needed Jesus and she needed to serve her beloved. This beloved of hers who had been killed, murdered, slaughtered, placed in the tomb hurriedly. And they were unable to finish the burial ritual. She had come early in the morning to her beloved. She needed him. Most likely she believed from what he had taught for the three years leading to his slaughter. With his message of love, of loving God, loving neighbor, loving self, and demonstrating that love over and over and over in the raising of the dead, in the healing of the sick, in the midnight conversations, in the feeding of thousands with a message, we need each other. And she came needing her beloved, believing that he needed her and for her to serve him with love. But then the tomb was different. Its closure had been moved, the great stone had been rolled away, and she risked to enter into the unknown. And what did she find? His body was not there, and things were seemingly in place. That which had tied his head was neatly folded and set to one side. His burial garment, his tunic, was also folded to one side. The place was pristine. The place was a beauty. But it wasn't the same. The body was not there. How could it be? And then she turned and ran to the community to tell them what she had seen. And they, in their explosive imagination and consternation, and whatever other emotions, whatever other thoughts, they ran as fast as they could to the scene. In the midst of it is the message from the risen Christ. Go tell the rest of the community, go tell the world what you have experienced. And John records that they went to their homes. They went to the world. We need each other is one powerful message of this story. I didn't know it then, last night, when I saw this gentleman walk in, this brother come amongst us, how much I needed him. I didn't know it then that during the course of the services I watched him with fear. Given the history of gun violence, of Many shooting up, even in the midst of a Bible study there in Charleston. And what of the shooting this past week? When even children were killed, and the shooter herself killed herself. And a community in uproar. But a community on the end of gun violence needing each other has come together. And like every community going through the difficulty and every community going through the trauma for whatever reason or reasons, be it gun violence, or whatever the effects of whatever the conditions coming together. 
we need each other. Mary needed her beloved. Her beloved needed her. Mary needed the community, and the community needed Mary. And the community responded with care and concern, with passion, determination, the resultant gift, and lifting each other, the joy, the joy, the joy. We need each other. We need each other. What is it and why? What is it that brought us here this morning? What is it that brought you here, each one of us? Or why have you come? What are you expecting? What are you hoping for? And when you leave this place this day, what will it be like for you? Would you have come with your joys, with your pain, with your questions, with your doubt? Whatever the circumstance of your life right now, of my life as well. Whatever it is in the life of this, the beloved community of the Episcopal Church of the Holy Family. What brought you here? Why have you come? What do you seek? And what will you go forth from this place? this day, this Easter day. This morning on the beach, when the two of us arrived early and we were the first two to be there, it was still dark. We set the table for the service, that of the Eucharist. Ron left and went to the entrance of the walkway onto the beach. As a signal, one who would welcome whoever would come, I stayed behind. Actually, Ron, I set you up to go out so that I would have the great opportunity to get into the water, which I did. Why did we get there? What is it we were searching for? What answers did we get? And then soon after, person after persons after persons came. And soon it was a sizable community gathered together. Why did we come? What is it we were searching for? What was it like? And what did we leave? Let me jump to that last question and I'll end. But I hope in responding to that last question, there will be something in it for you as you go forth from this place. And I'll give you a clue. I need you. You need we. We need each one. We need each other. From the community and a sizable community, I believe there was absolute joy. When persons shared their Easter story, it took a little to get going, but once we started, it was indeed the light 
of Christ in our midst. And for me, the sense of joy that we gained, but first gave to each other. That when I left there this morning, here's the scene. Just about everyone had walked down to the water's edge. I could see their joy in being together. I could hear the laughter, the peals of laughter, an expression of the joy of God's people needing each other, being together, experiencing what Mary experienced, though at first with trepidation, but connecting with the community, and the community connecting with her, with their beloved. And in being together and needing each other, just like they went to the world, this morning's community, in their joy, must have left the beach to the world to sheer. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. We need each other. Amen. Send into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God. You will come again in glory to the church of the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. for the forgiveness of sins, look for the resurrection of the dead, and the life of the world to come. Amen. The prayers of the people. Dearest Lord, Holy Lamb of God, Shepherd of the world, you lead us to respite and relief. You are our provider and sustainer, and through your providence, we will never want for your presence. You lead us to the fields of plenty, and you refresh our souls with the cool, clear waters of your spirit.
and you are truly with us, Emmanuel, God with us. So we will not fear evil, but be comforted. You came to give us life and give it to us abundantly. You have prepared your table for us and anoint us for service. Anoint us with your Holy Spirit. Help us to devote ourselves to your good teachings, to worship, to fellowship, and to prayer. Holy Lamb of God, today we pray for our sisters and brothers, especially for those who suffer. We pray for the children, those who live in plenty, but also for those who live in want. Pray for the wisdom to lead us to overcome the mountain and continuous gun violence ravaging our nation. For those who have died and those who are perpetrators of the violence. For those who grieve and mourn. We pray for those who are imprisoned by addiction or disease. All of us are like sheep who have gone astray. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. Help us to follow the example of Christ. He left his petitions in the hands of God, who always judges fairly. All we can say is thank you and pray that your goodness and mercy will follow us all the days of our lives. These things we pray in the name of Jesus, our good shepherd. Amen. Now, let us hang out for the next two minutes with each other. And after which, I'm going to talk everybody's business in public. So in the next two minutes, write all the business that you want. Give it to me and I will read it. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Also with you. Monica Allen, come here. Monica Allen. Come, come, come.
Thank you very much. Thank you very much. You may be seated. I said I wanted to know your business, that you should write it. Now, I recognize I didn't give you enough time because I have no idea why you didn't tell me your business to repeat it. But I look at you and some of you looking me through the corner of your eye. But I'd like to tell somebody's business, I cannot see your eyes, her eyes, because she's wearing shades. But she's taking it off now so we can see her eyes and the joy of her life. Ms. Carmen, would you kindly say something to the community, please? Introduce your husband, introduce your son. I know I'm putting you on the spot. Come, could, could you? I'm glad to be here to enjoy the service. And this is my husband, George. Thank you. We need each other. We need each other. I'm just leaving out that Easter message. We need each other. Thank you all for being here this morning. We will continue now with a festival meal. I don't know if somebody has brought breakfast, but I can give you bread and wine first and you run across the street and come back quickly with enough breakfast to feed Father Ward. We need each other with God's joy. Amen.
light of the world. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I need a child. I need a baby. If he is sleeping, let him sleep. Okay, Terry, could you come and stand here and hold him? My back is dead. No, no, boy. Oh, oh I help myself, please. Just me. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the height. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself, and when we had fallen to sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, his disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son. The holy food and drink of new and unending life in him sanctify us also, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask, your Son, Jesus Christ, by him, and with him, and in him. In the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Our Father. Break this bread and take this cup so that we can all share in the new life. For we need one another, one love in Jesus Christ. All are welcome. This morning, we will administer and invite your response as you so choose. 
In receiving the bread, you have the choice for the intinction or to sip. Intinct or to sip. It is your choice.
rejoice. And the gift of the resurrected Christ and the presence of each other where we need, we need, we need one another. Go forth rejoicing in the blessings being poured out and of all the many blessings in this community of which there is abundance. There's one young family that is a few months pregnant and I cannot wait for that baby and most likely if they choose to have that baby delivered in North Carolina and you look around and you do not see Father Ward, you know where he is. And soon thereafter, there's another who will be joined in holy matrimony. And a public announcement was made this week. Let me tell you in public, I have not responded to her, but I'm waiting for her to come I am going to scream and carry on like nobody's business. These are the blessings abundant in so many ways, in every way, and in which at this Easter we rejoice, for we need each other. And the blessing of God Almighty rest, remain, abide upon you and your loved ones this day and forevermore. Amen. Go in peace. Serve the risen Lord.